Howdy folks, this is Father Dougal 9000 here, and welcome to another episode of Game Finish Trios, a series where I talk about the games I've played and beaten as part of the Hardcore Gaming 101 Forums Game Finish Challenge. It's tricky trying to come up with preambles for these things. I like trying to add an extra bit of context to things before we get started, or to just have a little chat about whatever. Um, but in this case, I've got nothing, nothing at all to go from for today. But I do have a joke. Everyone likes jokes, yeah? Great. What do you call a film about people getting into bitter arguments about sodas with chemicals. Pulp Friction. Today's games were originally logged from the 18th of November to the 3rd of December, 2021. Spider-Man 2, for the Xbox. This is a replay, actually, I haven't really done those very often, but I felt like doing it because it's Spider-Man 2. It's one of my favorite uh, six-gen games of all time, really, and one that I used to play loads during my teens. Whenever I get stressed out by my latest existential crisis, I boot up the post-game mode where you have nothing to do and just swing around New York thinking about stuff for simply existing while well, I found Bruce Campbell hint tokens or rescue children's balloons. For whatever reason, I got the urge to play through the story mode again, which I haven't done in well over a decade going by my save files. Something that really stood out to me actually was how streamlined things are. You're given the ability to skip every story cutscene immediately, every activity progresses you to the next part of the game by awarding you with hero points, and you can even skip the opening tutorial by climbing to the top of the building you start from. I didn't even know that last one was a thing you could actually do until I decided for the heck of it to just see, could I climb up to that building, and you just let me skip the whole opening tutorial thing, that's amazing. And what struck me about it in particular was how much it stands in stark contrast to the PlayStation 4 Insomniac game that's generally considered the best Spider-Man game ever. And maybe it is quite good, but, you know, there are things about it I'm not all that keen on. Things like how you can't skip some cutscenes, goals seem to be more segmented in the typical open world style of, here's the main stuff, and then there's loads of busy work that doesn't really matter much, you can just ignore it if you want. And you have to do the opening hour or so before the game really opens up. Now, this isn't to say that one's better than the other. They're both very different styles of game design that work quite well on their own terms. I just happen to prefer Spider-Man 2 style. That said, the mandatory missions where you have to disable Dr. Octopus's reactor, and the one flight with the mechs can go away into a black hole. Those stink, though everything else is still pretty great. Devil May Cry 4 for the Xbox 360. I finally got round to this one, which was actually my introduction to the series all the way back in 2008. I rented it for a week, managed to get up to the forest puzzle as Dante where I got stuck, and then had to give it back. There was something compelling about it, sure, but I could never really get that passionate about it. I even bought it once or twice in the years since to give it a proper play, but it never really worked out. Now that I am a fan of the series, and have played through all of four, I can say that I have a better understanding of why it didn't grab me previously. Nero's combat is a bit too slow and underdeveloped for me. There's plenty of complexities to be found, sure, it's just that you need to get tons of proud souls to unlock attacks and moves that show them off. Uh, by the way, needing proud souls instead of red orbs to unlock moves stinks because you barely get a substantial amount of them for hours, and only at the very end of stages. 
It's only in Dante's section that you get enough to go to town on attacks and the like. Also, the game goes quite experimental with enemy designs that you're best grabbing and weird puzzles, both of which come off as charming if clunky at best and irritatingly repetitive at worst. There's a great game in here, with the boss fight against Kratos being a highlight that made me feel more pumped than I had been up until then, and it is deeply, deeply cathartic playing as Dante with all the complexities he's got from 3, with all the new weapons and moves that you can just mess around with. I almost don't even mind having to play through the game backwards as Dante, since you can just go nuts taking down enemies that were a pain hours before. It's just not for me as much as 3 or even 1 was, despite Dante's combat system being goddamn amazing. But it's still a very solid game. Plus, Out of Darkness is legit one of my favorite pieces of video game music. Legit end of. I can love that piece, so it wins forever on that alone. Dragon Ball Z Extreme Butoden for the Nintendo 3DS. I remember playing the demo for this back when it came out on the eShop. It was pretty neat, but I never really felt the urge to grab the full thing, and I gradually forgot about it until the other day. I figured I gave it a whirl, and I ended up beating that old adventure mode you unlock after completing the first campaign in the story mode. Something that's really nice is that the combat, simple as it is with only a handful of combos, though everyone pulls off different moves with those same inputs, uh, combat lends itself really well to a handheld setting. You can take the game out, have a couple of fights, and find that only two or three minutes have passed tops. Quite good for playing in brief spurts, but it lends itself just as well to longer sessions if you're up for it. However, having played the adventure mode, I found that part of the game quite disappointing. It's got this premise of reality breaking apart and featuring characters from every era interacting at once, but doesn't really do anything cool with it. Most of the chapters are recruitment fights against the same old characters, and then going through the Raditz Taboo progression where you spend a good chunk of the mid to late game fighting Frieza, Cell, and Boo over and over and over again. The final chapter does have some weird tag teams, but it doesn't really matter when most of the cast is relegated to summons. It kinda makes me wish that there was an arcade mode so it could have just a few fights without bland cutscenes, and better appreciate the combat mechanics in a way that's more interesting to me. It's a fine enough game, and maybe I'll check out the rest of the story mode or the challenges, but I'm equally fine with leaving it there. And you know, this was nearly two years ago and I've not touched it since, so yeah, I'm doing pretty fine without this existing in my life. And with that, we've wrapped up another episode of the series. I hope that you enjoyed watching, and that you'll tune in for the next video. Thank you so much, and until we meet again, have a wonderful day.